Hey everyone and welcome back to another great episode of Lemonade Weekly where we talk all things lemonade. So before we go ahead and get started, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. So thank you so much for your support. So we have pretty much here a breakout in lemonade ever since really the beginning of May and it shot up after earnings and then had a little bit of a sell off, shot up again, had a little bit of a sell off, but then ever since that $16 range we have gone almost up past $21 or so. A little bit of a pullback here on Wednesday, June 14th, almost 5% at 4.36% decrease here. So we were at about $21 to a little over 20, about 2017 or so, which is the final price right now. And you can see most of these bars here are green. There's a couple red ones in there, but we have a shot above all of the SMA lines, the 20 the 50 and the 200 so that is a big deal for lemonade and it even was in an article by zax and yahoo stating that so it did break out so let's talk about some of the news and what happened in may and in the month of may it did soar 62 percent and essentially this was because of improving profitability and high growth in the 2023 first quarter so that's really what that is about even after after this big increase, analysts still see a 31.99 upside in Lemonade. Even after this increase, analysts still see almost a 32% upside in Lemonade. And can this stock really move this high? And this was written at the price where it was 1607. So it's already gotten a lot of this upside in it. So scrolling down here, and the reasons why are better earnings than they predicted and strengthens this view and an impressive average price, strong agreement among analysts. So that was really the big kicker there and why the analysts thought that this all goes back to the Q1 earnings. And a newer article here from Simply Wall Street states that they have con Lemonade has continued this momentum and has a 21% rise over the last 12 months. So the PS or the price to sales ratio is a little bit high considering it is 4.6x and a lot of insurance industries PS ratios are below 0.9. However, I think Lemonade is a little bit broader than just to the average insurance industry stock, but since they are on the cutting edge of using AI, I've seen this grouped in as an AI stock, but that is the PS ratio. And again, looking back at the last year, 106% of revenue growth so that is really good and revenue is expected to climb by 30 percent per year during the next coming three years so the projections are obviously doing well as well so there was another interesting article i found that said buffett still isn't interested in lemonade and this goes back to the berkshire hathaway annual meeting which was not too long ago but he reminded everybody that insurance underwriting doesn't correlate with business activity because it depends on events like earth earthquakes and hurricanes and the majority of their businesses will report lower earnings this year compared to last year. So these are the two things that swing in their favor from the standpoint of investment income and insurance and they did have a better than last year in terms of insurance. So he did state he wanted to hold none of the publicly traded insurance companies founded in the last decade and states there have been a lot of public co public companies created in the last decade thereabouts insurance and none of them we would like to own and they always start out in their prospects prospectus prospectus and saying this is a tech company not an insurance company and so this is what warren buffett says for what it's worth i thought that this was an interesting article and um take it for what you will another article on seeking alpha by gary Alexander. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but he, he states lemonade big strides on all fronts. He has been historically pretty bullish on lemonade just as disclosure. And he states that the stock has surged over 30% with gains excel accelerating over Q1 results, showed improved losses and faster premium growth as well. And it does have impressive year over year revenue growth and it is appealed to tech savvy and customers to diversification into other insurance streams and improving loss ratios and it's raised 20 fiscal year 23 outlook and highlighted the potential for ai to automate hundreds of processes which drive down costs and further set it apart from other insurance companies so i thought that that was a pretty good article and now what i want to talk about is daniel schreiber was just on the news a couple days ago so i, I do want to show a short clip from him 
Artificial intelligence, whoa, that debate takes center stage on Capitol Hill tomorrow. Sam Altman, the guy on your screen, the CEO of OpenAI, that's the company behind ChatGPT, is going to testify before a Senate Judiciary Committee. Altman's going to answer questions about AI oversight and what risks the technology poses. Lawmakers, of course, you know this is coming. They will question Altman for the first time since OpenAI's chatbot took the world by storm late last year. So you know they're going to use it as a platform to hear their own voice. But within hours of launching, it saw mass adoption by everyone from college students to business leaders. So you're not putting that genie back in the bottle. But insurance provider Lemonade saw the benefits of AI years before ChatGPT came on the scene. The app uses a homegrown AI chatbot to help customers find and bundle insurance options. It also uses machine learning to predict catastrophes and claims and uses that data to price its policies. Joining me now, the company's CEO, Daniel Schreiber, here in a Fox Business exclusive. Boy, what do you think they're going to hit Sam Altman on? Oh, wow. Well, the world has just changed. It's like an alien intelligence has come to Earth <laughs> and the Congress has to come together and say, what do we do with this? You're absolutely right. Everything has changed. I really do think we're going to look back at the end of November 2022 as an event that just transformed humanity mm -hmm. in so many ways. And I wish Congress good luck in getting their arms around that. Thing. Well, well, you know, when Congress sees something, they want to slap their regulatory paws right on it. Right. So what do you hope doesn't happen? I don't know. I really don't envy them. I don't know what they're able to do. So we think of ChatGPT as being a unique product offered by OpenAI, then by Bing, Microsoft, now by Google. Actually, this is now already becoming an open source powerhouse. These technologies are now available to the masses. I don't know that this genie is going anywhere anytime soon, regardless of what Congress wishes. Yes, the genie in the bottle, or you can't unscramble that egg. There you go. <laughs> I mean, we just had the CEO of Office Depot, the parent of Office Depot and Office Max, sitting in that chair, and he's already struck a deal with Microsoft to use ChatGPT for all kinds of things, productivity, et cetera. But, you know, let's, let's forget about them for a minute, ChatGPT, because you launched in 2016 on your own homegrown artificial intelligence platform to do what? What does it allow you at Lemonade to do? You're absolutely right. If you did a, the kind of thought experiment, which we did when we founded the company and said, which industry is most able to harness, which kind of product would best be able to leverage artificial intelligence? Well, you wouldn't go to manufacturing or to mining or to any business that moves things from one place to the other. AI isn't good at those things. What is AI supremely good at? Ingesting data and making predictions. Well, guess what? That is exactly what insurance is. Insurance at its core is about monetizing probability theory, ingesting data, making predictions. So from the get go, we took that thought experiment and turned it into Lemonade. And from day one, we have been using chatbots. This is not a new thing for Lemonade. Mm -hmm. Three months after launching, we claimed a world record when our chatbot AI Jim paid a claim in three seconds. And today, about half of our claims are paid with no human intervention within seconds. Which is what allows you to keep rates so low. I went on your website today, just fooling around with it, and I saw that you have home insurance as low as, or renter's insurance, as low as $5 a month? That's right. How is that possible? Well, it's exactly what you just said. When you've got bots instead of brokers, right. you are collapsing costs not at the expense of the customer experience, but actually to the delight of consumers. If you get paid in three seconds, you're not going to complain about the lack of a human interaction. You're going to be thrilled to bits. And indeed, the NPS, the customer satisfaction scores that Lemonade sees are usually seen by the likes of Tesla or Apple, not by insurance companies. But how do, you, how do you work off evidence? I mean, don't you have to show up to see that somebody's basement was flooded? Well, there's an array of different claims that are made. Um, if it's a basement, then you can take photos. In fact, mm -hmm. all of our claims are made with a video from the phone with the app. You can upload surveyor reports or other kind of claims reports. There's a whole load of information that, you can, that the app can upload and analyze. You just uh, reported a loss in Q1, but you beat on revenue. So when will AI push you? When will Jim, the chatbot, push you to profitability? I know people were dying to know. We're well on our way. Our, our peak losses are behind us. Look at our Q1 results. We reported a 115% increase in revenue, 115% and only a 4% increase in operating expenses. So not only did we beat top and bottom line, but you're starting seeing the leverage that comes from having these kinds of systems. What we now need to do is to continue to grow because the expense will stay pretty static even as our business grows, and that is the secret to profitability. And you are, the last time you were here, we talked about pet insurance, and now you've got Lemonade Car. In, you just launched in Texas. I know it's huge, I would imagine, but when do you take over the Geico's of the world? 
<laughs> <laughs> Geico's been around for a while, but they have their challenges. I really don't envy them. Um, at their latest Berkshire Hathaway AGM 10 days ago, they spoke about the difficulty, they called it monumental challenge of bringing technology to a company like Geico. These are not easy things for incumbents to do. In fact, right. yeah. incumbents are encumbered, and that really is the opportunity that Lemonade has. And yes, I would believe that I've seen a couple of Berkshire Hathaway meetings where Warren Buffett said we were behind the curve. Absolutely. Behind progressive on certain things like marketing and now maybe behind you guys. It's good to see you. Wonderful to be with you. Daniel Schreiber of Lemonade. So I hope you did find that clip of Daniel Schreiber speaking about AI helpful. I always do like to share some of the clips of the CEO speaking. So we talked a little bit about analysts, but right now it is a little bit of a downside at 2.33% as we are sitting at the price of $20.17 as of market close on Wednesday, June 14th. And the it is a hold, one buy, two hold, two sell. The highest is 40 and the low is $11.50. So that gives us an average price target of, of $19.70. And in terms of the stock price and analysis, the smart score is at a four, which is neutral. Analysts say hold, bloggers are bullish, hedge funds are doing decreasing insiders are selling over the last three months crowd wisdom is negative and news has been neutral so that is all we have today for this episode of lemonade weekly where we talk all things lemonade so thank you so much for joining us and we will see you in the next episode